Hello and welcome to this video on inversely proportional quantities. Now let's just say you're on this beautifully drawn bike and you're cycling some particular race which has a fixed distance this race. Now let's just say that you ride at 20 kilometers per hour. And let's just say that if you ride at 20 kilometers per hour, the race takes you six hours. Now, what if you were to double your speed? So you rode instead at 40 kilometers per hour. Well, if you were to double your speed, you would halve the amount of time it would take. So if you double this, it would half the amount of time. So it would be divided by two. So it would take three hours. Now let's just say we were to quarter the speed that we originally went. So we divided the speed by four to get to five kilometers per hour. That's a very slow speed, isn't it, for a bike? Then what would happen to the time? Well, if you're riding four times as slow, it would take four times as much time. So it would now take 24 hours. So you can see whatever we're scaling this by, we're doing the opposite to the amount of time. So if we double the speed, we half the time. If we triple the speed, we third the time, etc. And we say that these are inversely proportional quantities. So speed and time are inversely proportional. Now let's use that to solve these particular problems here. So if four men can dig a hole in 30 minutes, how long will it take eight men, 12 men and five men? So let's just write it down. So in the previous video on directly proportional quantities, I like to write the two things like this, four men, and then I'll put an arrow to say there's some proportional relationship, and we've got 30 minutes. And we want to work out long, how long it takes eight men. So as before, we work out what the scale factor is. So how many times bigger is eight than four? Well, it's twice as big. We just do the eight divided by four. And because it's inversely proportional, if we double the number of men, it takes half as much time because you've got more men doing the job, so it's going to take less time to do. So that means if you're times the number of men by two, you divide the amount of time by two. So 30 divided by two is just 15 minutes. What about for 12 men? We've got 12 men. Now, thinking about the original value here of four, we can see that's three times as much, and therefore, because they're inversely proportional, the number of men and the amount of time, we're going to divide the amount of time by three. So, 30 divided by three is 10 minutes, so it would take 10 minutes. Now, what about five men? Now, I could do five men and do five divided by four, but let's just say you didn't have a calculator and, it was, and you found it difficult to do five divided by four. What you could do is to first work out how long it would take one man. So go via one thing. So if we found it for one man, now if we have four times less men, it will take four times as much time, the opposite. So 30 times four would be 120 minutes. And then we can now go from one man to five men. So then we say, well, if we've got five times as many men, it takes five times less time. And 120 divided by 5 is 24 minutes. Now, this method I used this time was called the unitary method. And the unitary method is basically finding out what the value is for one thing, in this case, one man. Let's do question two. 11 taps fill a tank in three hours. So let's do 11 taps, firstly proportional to three hours. And if we double the number of taps, we would half amount of time, so then firstly proportional. How long would it take to fill the tank if only six taps are working? Now we could write six here and work out the scale factor by doing six divided by 11, but then we kind of get awkward fractions. So let's do the unitary method again. Let's work out how long it takes for one tap. So we've got 11 times less taps, so it would take 11 times as much more time because they're inversely proportional. So three times 11 is 33 hours. And then we want to work out for six taps. So we've got six times as many taps, so it takes six times less time. So we just do 33 divided by six, and we get 5.5 hours. 
But we could have used the original method. We could have worked out the direct scaling between 11 and 6. So remember to find out how many times bigger 6 is than 11. We divide them. So it's 6 divided by 11, which is 6 elevenths. So we're timesing by 6 elevenths. And therefore, to get them out of time, we do the opposite. We would divide by 6 elevenths. And if you do 3 divided by 6 elevenths, then you get 5.5 again. So it's up to you what method you use. The unitary method is quite good if you don't have a calculator. Whereas if you do have a calculator, you might want to just do this direct scaling method where you do that divided by that, and then divide by that quantity. What about the third one? Nine children equally share out sweets in a bag and get eight each. So nine children, and they get eight sweets per child. So we were to double the number of children because they're sharing out the sweets more, you would half the amount of sweets each. So they're inversely proportional. So we want to find out for six children. So I'm just going to use the scaling method this time, just for variety. So we work out what the scale factor is. So we do the second number divided by the first. We do six divided by nine, which is two thirds. So we're timesing by two thirds to get from nine to six, which means we do the opposite because they're inversely proportional. So we divide by two thirds. So we do 8 divided by 2 thirds, and that gives us 12 sweets. Or you could have done the unitary method. So if 9 children was each get 1 sweet, then if you had 1 child, that's 9 times less children, so it would be 9 times as many sweets, so it would be 8 times 9, which is 72. So if 1 child was 72 sweets... Then to get to six children, because you're times it by six, you divide that by six, and that would get you the same answer. But the answer is 12 sweets.